So, I Train Asia, uh, I Train Malaysia is uh, supporting the digital transformation in Southeast Asia. So, we are the pioneers and leaders in tech learning, and at I Train, we believe in two core principles the power of technology to shape the future and help us build a better world and that love of learning is the source of human ingenuity and well-being and our goal which is backed by government and academia is to fast track asian businesses with the latest technology applications and know-how and these are some of the courses that i train currently provides they're in the fields of artificial intelligence digital marketing data science Industry 4.0, mobile app development, fintech, cybersecurity, blockchain, etc. So, and all of these, uh, most of the courses are also HRDF. Yes, and uh, these are some of the clients that we have had the chance to work with and with whom we've helped to empower their businesses across. And as you can see, they're from many strategic sectors, as in finance, technology industry and manufacturing so the future is truly digital and from creative arts to businesses to fundamental sciences the future of every field has been revolutionized by the digital industry and i train we know that for people to unlock this endless potential we need to give them the keys that are digital fluency so that is it from me today. And I will give uh, the floor now to Wayne. And uh, during the presentation, I will also share uh, some links that one of the links are uh, a feedback form that I would kindly ask all of you to fill so that we have responses on how we can further on improve our webinars. And yes, so that floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, Liz. And um, I noticed that in the chat section, there are quite a number of people saying that uh, you guys cannot hear a uh, list uh, like clearly. So um, just want to check, uh, just want to make sure everybody can actually hear me. Can you just give me like a response like yes, if you can hear me? Okay, that's cool. Okay, I noticed like uh, everybody can hear me. Okay, that's cool. So let me just present my screen before I start. All right, um, so first of all, I'd like to introduce myself and uh, my name is Wayne and I'm your presenter today uh, to basically show you um, a few ways and also uh, some other tools that that is actually available out there uh, for you to teach and engage your students online. And uh, I believe uh, everybody joined this session uh, for a purpose today, okay? And may I know how many of you here are actually like educator in the school or in a university or in a college and how many of you actually um, doing um, some sort of online learning during this um, mco period so i can i can see like university yes doing online learning and i mean yes okay so most of you here, you guys are actually doing like some sort of online learning during this, uh, in a, I would say in the past two weeks. And um, right now we are actually coming into the third week. Um, so I'm pretty sure some of you uh, are actually using tools like, for example, Zoom, okay? Or you guys might be even using like Google Classroom. So, um, and in the past few days, I've also noticed like, uh, 
some of the news articles saying that, for example, on my screen right now, you can see um, the education uh, ministry, ministry, the Ministry of Education in Malaysia actually introduces uh, guidelines on online teaching, okay, such as like, uh, they actually introduce some of the learning platforms, okay, and they even kind of like uh, interview some of the educator. Sorry, I'm I'm actually hearing some echo. So can you guys just uh, mute your microphone? Um, let me just check. Okay, I think it's all good now. So, um, yeah, we talk about like, for example, some of the educator actually are being interviewed. So uh, they're being questioned, like, what are the platforms that they actually use? What are the method that they actually use for um, online learning? So, uh, for example, here you can see this teacher actually use um, Google Classroom, and um, she actually used Zoom meetings uh, to actually. Um, talk to the students, especially for those who are actually weak in certain subject. And also like one of the iTrain partner, for example, MDEC. So they are even introducing some of the e-learning solutions during this COVID-19 um, pandemic. So uh, as you can see, everybody is actually introducing um, online learning at this moment. But okay, we have to know, we got to know the right tools to use and the right way to use in order for us to actually have um, effective online learning. So today, I'm going to show you a few ways that you can teach and engage your student online without any hassle, or I would say with very minimum hassle, okay? And are you guys ready for it? So I just want to make sure everybody can still see me and can still hear me, can still see my screen, okay? If you guys, so meanwhile, if you guys have any question, please feel free, okay, to actually interact with me or interact with each other within the chat uh, section, okay? So that uh, maybe some of you uh, could be actually sharing the ideas or uh, the method that you actually currently using. And at the same time, if you have any question regarding what I'm showing you today, okay, please feel free to just ask it, ask your question within the chat uh, section. And we should have somebody here to actually answer you. All right. So first of all, I'm going to show you, okay, uh, a very useful tool that you can use under G Suite for education, uh, for your online learning. So which is what you're currently using now, Google Hangouts. So may I know how many of you here, uh, this is like, this is your first time of using Google Hangouts today. So first time, a lot of first time. So is there anyone that like it's been do, using for quite some time, several times, okay, first time. And what are the other like conference, uh, conferencing tool that you use, you normally use? Okay, Zoom. Okay, Microsoft Teams, interesting. Skype. Okay, it's very good to know, it's very good to say that uh, a lot of you here, like it's actually your first time here to use uh, Google Hangouts. So basically Google Hangouts is a very useful conferencing tool for you to perform online teaching and I will actually show you why, okay? Because uh, one of the reasons is because uh, Google Hangouts is actually connected to your Google Drive, to your other Google tools such as Google Classroom as well. So you can actually use everything within a single package, okay, which you do not have to actually go around to uh, have upload like certain material to different platform and share with other people. But instead of that, you can actually have everything under the same umbrella, okay, which can be very useful. So first of all, I'm going to show you um, first way of how do you set up this um, online learning 
virtual class with your students. So for example, I'm pretty sure every one of you uh, heard of Google Calendar. Okay, what we're gonna do here is basically to show you to set up a virtual class classroom first before you can allow your student to join into the class. So for example, okay, today is Wednesday and you will like to actually um, set up a virtual class for tomorrow afternoon. So tomorrow will be the second. So I will just click on my Google Calendar here and I'll set a class. Okay, for example, just put it as, Logic. Okay. Class one. For example, that's the name of my class. And what I'm gonna do is that I have to add my time first. Okay, before I can start to create any sort of uh, conferencing uh, link for my student to join into my class. So I'll just set it as two. And my class is gonna us, be an hour. Lisa, can you show us the screen what you're doing right now? Because I, I can't see the screen. Oh, okay. Um, let me I, I can't see which screen. button you're, you're demonstrating. It's actually visible. Uh, Wayne's screen is visible. You have to change the layout of uh, your, yeah, on the right hand side, on the bottom right hand side. You can opt to change layout and then you will see for sure Wayne's presentation. But uh, yes, when your presentation is visible. Okay, is it visible? I can't see. Yes, it's visible. You have to change on the change layout option. All right. So, so when I put the change layout, it shows the auto sidebar spotlight tile. So which one I, sh I press on? It, do it doesn't matter, it should be sidebar, but you can, when you see Wayne's screen, you have to, yeah, when you see Wayne's screen, you have to put, you have to put a pin on it. That's all right, I just to share my screen again. So I hope everybody can actually see it now. Ah, uh, yeah, all right, yeah. Okay, all okay, right. cool, all right. Okay, let's start it again. All right, so uh, we talk about Google Classroom, right? So we talk about like um, setting like a virtual class on your Google Classroom. So um, for example, we're gonna set a class for tomorrow at 2 p.m. So this is what um, I've done so far. So I click on the date for tomorrow, which is the second. And then I set a class name here, I set for the time. And here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna skip the add guest part, okay? Instead, I'm going to add a conferencing call link over here so that everybody could actually join into my virtual class by clicking on this link, okay? So once everything is done here, so that's pretty much, that's it. So the name, the time, and the link, okay? And the last part is gonna be like setting your event for the right class okay in this case i'm going to just keep it as for when i train okay my calendar and just hit save so once you have hit your save button this is what you're going to see okay you're going to see okay i have a 2 p.m biology class one tomorrow so i'm going to click on this event and i'm just going to hit copy so once I hit the copy button, so the link is copy success, uh, is being copied. So what I'm gonna do is that I will go into my Google Classroom. I believe some of you here might be actually using it already, okay? And I'm just gonna go into my class. Okay, for example, one of my class here, I'm gonna post it as an announcement for my student to tell them, hey, you have a class for tomorrow. And this is the link that you get to join into your virtual class here. So join us tomorrow. Okay, and I'll just hit post. And it's that simple, okay? So as you can see, I just have to set up a class here under my calendar 
and I copied the code and go straight into Google Classroom and paste it there. So everyone, everyone who are actually in your classroom will be able to access to this link. And if they have any question, they can actually ask you under the comment section. Okay. So let me check if you guys have any question here. Okay. So somebody said he cannot hear me. Okay, cool. So, okay. So far as you notice, within like five minutes, we have already used two different apps, okay? But without any hassle. So we have set an appointment in Google Calendar and then we copy the link and put it there in Google Classroom to share with students. So the next step would be, okay, your student joining into the virtual class and the next step will be like for you to start teaching in your virtual class. So this is what I'm gonna do, pretending like today, okay, this is the student, okay, he's actually clicking on the link. So this is basically your student will see before they start to join in the class. They get to see the name of the class and they get to see the join now button, okay, and a few settings here that you'll have to adjust even for yourself, okay. So two buttons here on the left side is actually your microphone button and on the right side is your uh video button okay so let's say before you joining into a session if you do not want anyone to hear you you just have to hit this turn on turn off microphone button so you'll be off and once you hit the video button okay both of them will be turned off so once it's off, you get to see it's actually in red color. All right. And there are more settings here. So I heard a lot of people, a lot of educators, they actually uh, complain to me saying that, hey, uh, my home internet, the speed is not fast enough to support any sort of uh, virtual classroom or um, the internet speed recently is not that good. So how can I solve that problem? So if I still wanna uh, do some conferencing call with my students, so here is how you can do it. So on the bottom right, I'm sure you can see like there is a more options button. So what you can do is to cl click on it. And from here, you get to turn on the captions just like somebody actually asked if I could actually turn on the caption for you, okay, because you cannot hear me. So, and you can set the settings of your microphone and video. All right, so usually before I join into a, a classroom or before I join into a conference call, I will make sure, okay, my microphone is working. So, I will select the right microphone. So, let's say if you actually have a external like an external device connect to your laptop you should see like multiple microphone here usually i'll recommend people to use internal microphone because it works better with the call okay and for speakers so i'm pretty sure sometimes you guys might be hearing some echo from uh, the other side okay from the other people or even people hear the echo from you so that's because uh, your speaker your external speaker is actually facing your microphone so that's why it creates some sort of echo so you have to make sure that you are using the right speaker okay before you join into a a call you can actually test it yourself over here selecting different speakers that you have already connected to and just hit the test button. All right, this is important. So once you hit the test button, you should be hear hearing like a beeping sound, okay? And the next part will be the interesting part, okay? Here, you get to set the resolution of the video that you want your audience to see. So we talk about the bandwidth problem. We talk about internet speed problem. So sometimes we might not have uh, like decent, decent internet connection. So this is what you can do. You adjust 
your definition, your video definition to a lower uh, definition so that you wouldn't uh, encounter like the slow or the lagging of the video, okay? You can adjust it for both sending out and receiving resolution. So on the top here, you get to adjust, you get to set the camera that you want to use. By default, you should see only one camera if you have, uh, like if you're using the internal built-in camera in your laptop. So if you're having like a, an external webcam, you should be able to see like multiple options here, okay? So uh, for now, usually when I have decent internet connection, I would set it as high definition so that I want my audience to be able to see my screen and then also to see uh, myself clearly on the uh, webcam, okay? So once everything is done, you just hit done. And here, now you get to see two buttons here. One is join now and another one is present. So what are the differences? Okay, so by hitting join now means you join into a call just like what you guys are having now. You guys actually join into a call and you guys are listening to me. And probably if you want to talk to me, you can actually talk to me. Okay, but if you hit the present button, okay, you will be presenting your screen straight away. Be okay, before you start joining into a call. All right, so here's the differences. And, um, and as you get to see other options here, join and use a phone call for audio. Okay, I actually noticed somebody asked whether uh, you are able to make a phone call with this Google Hangout Meets. Yes, you can, but currently is not available in Malaysia. Okay, let me repeat. So you can actually call in using a phone call with uh, standard charges um, of a normal, like a telco charges, but it's currently not available in Malaysia. Okay. So once everything is done, you just have to hit join now. All right, so this is gonna be what you can see. And of course there are more for you to learn. Okay, so and you will know at the end of the session, at the, at the end of this session, you will know why am I showing you this tool for you to use for online learning. So remember, uh, initially we learned about setting a class in Google Calendar, and then we set up a link and copy into Google Classroom. And right now we are in the call, we are in the classroom already. So this is what you're gonna do. You have to present your screen for your student to be able to see uh, whatever you wanna teach, right? So uh, once you hit the present now, so this is what you get to see. You get to present your entire screen or you get to present just one single window just in case you do not want your audience to see other things on your screen, all right? And here you get to do one very important thing, which is to record your meeting or your call or your class teaching, okay? So why am I recommending this function? Because once you get it recorded, you'll be automatic automatically save in your drive, in your Google Drive, and you can attach it into your Google Classroom and share it with your students for revision, okay? So I noticed some of you actually sent some question in. Okay, yes. Uh, Vincent is right. Okay, your Google Classroom can actually have uh, maximum 250 students. All right. So, so, okay, so let's continue. Okay, so once you hit the record meeting button, so let me just show it to you guys. So you'll be prompted, okay, uh, that recording without uh, the consent of the participants is actually illegal. So of course, with your students, they should already know that you are actually recording the session. So you just have to hit accept in order to get the recording started, okay? Once it's loading, you get to see on the top left, there is a gray button here, okay? And now it changed to red because it's currently recording. 
all right? And you don't have to worry about uh, how do you save this video? How do you uh, find it? Because as soon as this entire session is being recorded, it will be automatically saved in your Google Drive and you should be able to receive an email from Google saying that, hey, okay, your video is being recorded now. All right. So let me show you how does it look like in your Google Drive, okay? Now we are heading to the fourth app now, okay, which is Google Drive. So once it's being saved, okay, over here, this should be what you can see. Okay, you get to see meet recording and it's being saved with the name same as your session or your class that you have set. Okay, it's gonna be a video format and with the, rec with the record of all the messages that are sent in by the participant. Okay, so now the next thing you can do is basically to upload this video to your Google Classroom as one as one of the learning material okay so this is what you can do so you just create material and you attach it from your google drive so here's my video and i'll hit add Just name it as version class one and with the date. All right. And topic. And hit post. It's quick and easy. Okay. So once it's being posted, your students should be able to assess to your virtual class, your recorded virtual class anytime, anywhere, as long as they have Google Classroom, okay? Let's, so in this case, you don't have to worry about, okay, I do have some student actually miss out my class. So I wish they could have actually joined my class. So you do not need to worry about all that because everything is being recorded and it's being saved in your drive and shared with your student in Google Class and you'll be there forever, okay? Until, unless you remove it one day, all right? So let's see. Uh, some more question here. So how to mute all participants as in Zoom? So <clears throat> for now, at the moment, uh, you will not be able to mute all participants in once, but what you can do is you can select a single uh, participant like to mute them, okay? In Google Hangout easily link. Is Google Hangout easily linked to IMS platform? All right, um, Woon, okay, Woon, regarding your questions, um, for the linking in between the LMS and Google Hangouts, it, uh, it can get a little mm. bit uh, complicated, okay? Because right now, um, Google doesn't actually provide any sort of API uh, for Google Hangouts for you to link to your LMS. However, okay, Google does actually provide API for you to link Google Classroom to your LMS, okay? And yes, it actually requires your university IT team to, to get the API from Google to actually perform the linking part, okay, for the LMS platform and, and Google Classroom. How can I share the video recorded to students, okay, from town? All right, so uh, as I mentioned earlier, so let me just repeat this step, okay? We have, so assuming that we have already recorded this session, and what we're gonna do here is to go back to the Google, to Google Classroom and hit the Create button. 
So instead of creating assignment, we this time we're gonna use it as a learning material. So we're gonna hit material here, okay? And you just have to add it from your Google Drive because everything will be saved within Google Drive. So you just have to select your video, okay? Set a title for it and set a description for it and hit post button. Once it's there, okay, you'll be able to see your materials over here and students get to assess it anytime, anywhere, as long as they have like Google Classroom app on their phone or internet connection, okay? So is there any more question from you guys? Okay, and of course, one thing, um, once you start recording, of course, you have to stop recording as well. So what you have to do is just to hit the same button over here, just to hit stop recording. Okay, so, and just to confirm. Okay. When you recording, it only record your screen. So when you are recording, when you are actually performing um, the recording of the Google Hangout call, so it will actually record um, whatever that you have actually selected here. So for example, if you uh, select entire screen, so your entire screen will be recorded. So let's say you select a window. So only that particular window will be recorded. Okay. So is Google Hangout meeting link generated and shared with student considering? So PC, uh, will chat be recorded? Yes, it will be recorded. So when you go into your Google Drive, your chat will look like this. So it's actually in a Google, Google Docs format together with your video within the same folder, okay? So I'm reading one more question here, okay? Okay, from Hui, Hui Yan. Um, so I'm not sure if I actually understood your question, but I try to actually uh, explain to you what you're trying to ask. So I'm assuming that you're asking whether you have to invite your student when you're setting up your Google Class, sorry, Google Calendar Hangouts link. So, um, so the, the answer will be, so when you set up your um, appointment here or your event, your class here, as long as your student is using the same email domain as what you're using, so probably like the university email, okay, you guys will be able to join into the call without having to actually invite them, okay? So can you do a quick summary of steps? So I haven't missed, um, sure we can. Okay, first of all, so what you can do, okay, we start from the beginning. So um, you, can, you can set up a class, a virtual class on your Google Calendar after deciding a date that you want to run your class. For example, okay, you want to run a class tomorrow. So what you do is to select a date and you type in the name of the class. Okay, followed by the time. Set a time, two to three, and add a conference call link so that everybody get to actually join into class at the same time. Okay, and hit save. So first step is done. It's quick, easy, simple. Okay, so what you can do is to hit on this 
event that you have set and hit the copy button and then go into your Google Classroom, post it as, you. there are a few ways to post it. So you can post it as an assignment or you can post it as an announcement. In this case, I feel like uh, a Hangout link call, it should be an announcement, okay? So, and with your message, along with your message here, join me tomorrow, okay? And hit post. and everybody within the class will be able to hit this link and join into your call, all right? So once they hit on this call, okay, they should be able to see themselves on the screen. And what I would advise you when you're posting um, the announcement for the Hangout links, you can actually include the step, okay? For example, you'll want them to mute or their microphone before they join into the call so that they know, okay, I have to mute it before I join into the call so it doesn't interrupt the session. So they would actually hit this button. And if let's say they do not want anyone to see them, they can actually hit the turn off camera button, okay? And they just have to hit join now. And there it goes, join into the class, okay? And while your class is actually ongoing, this is what you can do. You can hit the option at the bottom right and hit the record meeting button. Then your meeting or your call will be automatically recorded and saved into your Google Drive, okay? And once the video is saved, you can attach it under classwork for revision purposes, for uh, future learning purposes, or keep it just to keep it as a record, okay? Okay, let me see if you guys have more questions. How about participant laptop screen? Okay. No, so regarding recording the screen, you will only record your screen or whoever that is presenting. So it's not gonna be recording everyone's screen, okay? So PC just mentioned, you shared a link invitation with your student by right. So, and of course, okay, uh, there are a few ways of doing it. Uh, there is no uh, right or wrong, okay? It's just basically your preference. So for example, let's say if you prefer to actually invite your student directly within your Google Calendar, you can actually do it, okay? So what you can do is to just type in the student group, name of the student group, or uh, each, every student names here, Okay, and it should actually pop out their email address and you get to invite each, every one of them and set it as a private uh, a class invitation for them, okay? Is Google Hangout free or there is enhanced version that is chargeable from uh, Bei Chun Xiong? Yeah, so uh, Google Hangouts is actually entirely free for it everybody, especially for education. Uh, let's say if you're an educator, if you're an institution and you're using G Suite for education, basically all Google tools, they are free for you, okay? So let's see if there are more questions. Okay, so if there is no, there's no more questions, so let me just continue the last part of this session. So, of course, after you have recorded your session, okay, um, and you may want to check, okay, who are the people actually uh, chatting or interacting within, within your call. So you can actually go to the top right here and click on the chat button here so you'll get to see everybody. 
okay, who are actually talking here. And on the left tab, you get to see the people who are the people who are in the call, okay? And the very last part is, which is the most important part, is that you have to make sure that you end your call. Because um, like few few days ago, I actually read a news from the US. So this teacher is actually running some sort of, uh, Sorry, I think that this is not teacher. So there are a group of colleagues. They're actually running some sort of conference call. So one of the lady actually forgot to turn off the camera or the, to end the call. So, and then uh, she actually ended up being seen by everybody in a call of what she was doing in the room. So it's very important. So by ending the call, this is what you can do. You just have to hit on the end call button um, at the center. At the bottom so just hit end call okay and you will see you left the meeting all right so we have more questions here using google classroom at school with students if so okay from two okay can I use G Suite for private like uh, tuition or academy? Um, yes, of course you can. Um, but of course, if you want to use it um, for tuition and academy, and if you like to get G Suite for education for free, you will have to go through a process with Google, basically for you to apply for this free tools to use it, okay? I wouldn't recommend you to use a personal um, gmail to actually use google classroom because you will not be able to interact with your students you will not be able to add anyone into your classroom okay that's for the personal gmail so if you want to be able to interact with the students you should you are actually recommended to go through the process of getting G Suite for education for your academy or for your tuition center so that everybody will be actually put into the same domain and the teachers and the students will be able to interact with each other, will be able to use Google Classroom together, okay? Is there a time limit for each session? There is no time limit. There's no time limit for the session, okay? So if you have 200 students in your video, how do you track who, who is attending and who is not? Okay, basically what you can do is to look at the people here, okay? That's how, that's one of the way you can actually see uh, who other people are to join the call. But of course, there, there is another way which you can actually combine the usage of Google Hangouts, okay, with Google Forms, for example. So you can paste a link here under, under like the chat section, okay, which is your Google Form link for them to actually log in with their own attendance or to check uh, who have actually attended this call, okay? But in terms of tracking, so if you're talking about tracking system, whether you get to uh, check somebody who, who is actually currently, currently in a call, I would say at this moment, uh, Google Hangouts does not have this function yet, but uh, who knows in the next update, there'll be such a function because right now we are, uh, actually recommending it for educator, for institution to start using it for online learning. And also like guys, uh, at the same time, um, my colleague uh, Elizabeth has just shared the webinars feedback form. So uh, we will appreciate it if you could actually give us some feedback on these webinars and do let us know uh, what you guys would like to learn more next time, okay? So that we can actually plan out for you guys and uh, provide more session to actually teach you guys or give you some tips on uh, online learning, on what are the tools that you can use, okay?
can I control whether to allow someone to join or reject? Yes, you can. Okay, let's say somebody um, who is not within your university domain, okay, when they try to join in, they will have to wait for your approval. So if you think that, okay, this is not somebody within my class because, uh, or not somebody within my university, okay, because he's not actually using a, and universe, a university email. So you can actually hit reject. So this person will be rejected from the call. So he or she will not be able to join into the call. Okay. So meanwhile, do you guys still have any other questions? So it's not necessary to be a question about Google Hangouts or Google Calendar. So you can also ask any other question about G Suite for Education. What's the difference between Zoom and Google Hangouts? Okay, that's a good question. So, uh, for for information, like Google is uh, Zoom is actually a standalone uh, conferencing call too. Uh, as far as I know, is not is not actually part of Google. And Google Hangouts is actually um, obviously uh, under the umbrella of uh, Google of G Suite. Okay, and as you can see. The, the advantage of using Google, Google Hangouts, is that uh, everything is connected. So when you record something, it's connected to your drive, and you can actually pull out the video directly from your drive into your Google Classroom. So um, in a way, we call it a seamless uh, solution for everybody, OK? So will you be sharing with us a recording of this meeting? Uh, for sure, yeah, definitely. So um, Liz, uh, can, can I just confirm with you, uh, we will actually upload this section, uh, sorry, this video to somewhere, right, to YouTube. Yes, uh, this video will be uploaded on YouTube. And after the presentation, during I would say, yeah, at, at least until tomorrow, you should receive a follow-up email with the YouTube recording and a reminder to fill out the feedback form as well. Okay. Okay. So to answer your question, uh, definitely um, to answer your question, yeah, Nor, uh, Nor Azla. So definitely we'll be sharing the video to you guys of this session, okay? What's the difference in between Google Meet and Google Hangout? Okay, so that's a good question. So Google Hangout, um, Google Hangouts used to be the only conferencing app within under the Google umbrella. So right now they actually release uh, one more tool called Google Meet, which is some sort of enhanced version of Google Hangouts. And because right now they are slowly eliminating Google Hangout very soon. So uh, in the future, uh, once Google Hangout is being um, eliminated, so Google Meet will actually replace this app, okay? Hi, Wayne, can I ask a question? Sure, go uh, ahead. Can can we join two meetings? Let's say we have uh, the concurrent meeting at the same time. Can we join two meetings at that particular time? Oh, definitely. But of course, you'll be hearing like uh, multiple sources of, of uh, audio yes. because, yeah, definitely you get to join in. But um, 
it will not be able to combine into one session just for information, if that's what you mean. So All right. it will be, yeah, it will still be like totally uh, different, separate. Let's say session. we have two meetings uh, happening at the same time, so we may not be able to be joining them, right? Because it's disturb yeah. our listening then. Yeah. Actually, uh -huh. I, right, thank you. I have a note on the listening part. So if you're using Google Chrome, once you press on tab, you, are, you have the option to mute site. So whichever meeting you would like to mute and focus on the other one, you can opt to mute site on the tab option on Google Chrome. All right, thank you, Ms. Elizabeth. It's a good idea also. And thank you for your question as well. Okay. Uh, okay, we get to see more question here. From Chu, can you share some information about Google Certified Educator uh, extra advantages in teaching? Sure. So basically, Google Certified Educator uh, certification level one and two, there are uh, certification courses for uh, for educators to actually uh, to actually learn and get themselves recognized as Google Certified Educators, which uh, the certification itself is worldwide recognized and is recognized by Google, is recognized by uh, ISTE, okay? And any extra advantages in teaching, of course. Um, let me just give you, for example, let me just give you a scenario, okay? When you go for an interview, okay? The interviewer might ask you, so what do you know? Okay, we need somebody who can actually teach with technology. So this is what you're gonna tell them. Hey, I, I'm an expert in Google. I'm, in, I'm an expert in using technology uh, in my teaching. But then you'll be asked, how can you prove it? So this is when you get to prove it with your certification of being a Google Certified Educator. Of course, at the same time, um, once you get certified, you'll be giving you'll be given like badges to be actually uh, uploaded into your LinkedIn profile or even used as part of your uh, email signature to prove that you are actually certified by Google. And of course, like this certification, it will be last for twenty four months. So, which means every twenty four months, you will have to re update your knowledge about the Google technology, okay? So, and of course, uh, for iTrain, we do actually provide the certification workshop as well. Do feel free to actually uh, reach our team out and they'll be able to help you to understand more about this uh, entire, entire certification workshop, okay? How to sign up for the certification? Um, so my team will be will be able will will be actually contacting you after this to actually share more information with you on this, okay? We update means going to another test. Yes. So to to answer your question, yes, you need to take an exam of the certification course every two years. So reason being, uh, the technologies uh, it change rapidly like every month there is a new thing coming up okay so which is why every two years you have to keep yourself updated um, on the technologies that have been developed over two years so that's why you need to uh, take the exam every two years okay any more questions So if there is no more questions, I, I guess um, this will be the end of our session today. Um, Liz, do you have any more um, information or question that you would like to share with the audience? Thank you, Wayne. Uh, well, now I would, the information I just added in the chat as well, and I will share my screen shortly. Um, Yes, so a reminder to fill out, 
to fill out the feedback form. And if you have any questions on the Global Certified Educator Program, you can always uh, access our website, www.itrain.com.mi, or send an email inquiry to info at itrain.com.mi. Okay, thank you very much, and hope to see you guys again soon. Bye-bye.